שאינו יודע. אורייט, סו איטס כ"ו אדר ב', אורייט? 5779, we are in שמואל א', צ'אפטר 4, verse 5, ד' פייג' 30 in your books. Um, <coughs> and um, we are in the, uh, in the midst of a, uh, a war, a war, what else is new, right? Um, a war between the Philistines and, and us. It's a war that uh, apparently was uh, initiated by, by the Jews. who were oppressed by the Philistines for now um, uh, 20, uh, 60 years, um, since 60, or maybe 50 years, um, since the time of, uh, uh, of Shimshon, you know, so Samson, uh, Shimshon um, Agibo, the Philistines didn't, uh, didn't lay off and uh, they, they were oppressing us and they were um, uh, demanding tax and terrorizing us. Um, and uh, we, they, they had a stronghold along the coast from around Jaffa, maybe a little lower than that, down to the area of Gaza, the Gaza Strip, um, and uh, a little more inland. Not, not a lot of land, um, but enough to, uh, uh, to, be, uh, to be a pain. And they were um, very... Um, uh, the what? Belligerent. Yeah, but, but they, they, they had the political support. They had um, uh, a lot of ports, uh, like two, three ports. And uh, ships were docking over there, and they, they had trade over there. So they had some political um, uh, backing. Um, and um, that's, uh, that's what gave them to the... You know, they were brazen. And they knew, apparently, they knew enough, and we will see it today, they knew that um, the Jews are not going to just kill them uh, because they're not part of the seven nations. The seven nations were the, uh, the nations that we were, um, we were told in the Torah by God yeah. To, to throw out of the, of the land, and if they refuse to, throw out, to, 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 to leave the land, to, uh, to um, uh, you know, get rid of them. Uh, and they were not part of those seven nations. So they knew that the worst that can happen to them is that they'll be uh, our slaves. Um, so they, you know, when someone is not afraid for their life, they, they, they have a whole different... Uh, so They, not only that they were not uh, working for us and with us, they were, they were uh, oppressing us. So, this is the time of, we are, we are in the year, um, exactly, we know the year, it's, it's, it's awesome. We know the year and the dates and the whole thing. It's 3,000, uh, 3,008 years ago, exactly. Um, Around this time of year, maybe, maybe a couple of months, actually it's a couple of months later, uh, um, the, the battle, that the, the second battle, the first battle happened um, in, uh, I think, Chet or, or Tet Iyar, the ninth day of Iyar, and the final battle happened in Yud Iyar, the tenth day of Iyar. So it's, uh, um, and that's uh, the battle that uh, ended up, we, in this battle we lost the ark, we lost the two sons of Eli, uh, and when Eli was told that that's what happened, he um, fell and uh, was very, uh, very upset and fell and died himself at the age of 98. Before, we'll re before we learn that, we will also summarize a little bit of how important Eli was to the Jewish people till this very day. He was a very important link in the chain of tradition. We'll talk about it as well. Um, so we, um, the, the war occurred around, we gathered around the area of uh, nowadays Petach Tikva. Um, it's um, a place that will be called Eben Um Nowadays we call it Petach Tikva. And um, 
it was a, it's a not mountainous area, it's flat. So the war was uh, spread in a big field. Um, and the first battle, in the first battle we, uh, we lost 4,000 men, which is not, it's a lot of people. We never lost that many, that number, so many people <coughs> battling uh, an enemy. Um, in ancient times, it's not a big number for a battle. Um, but it was very, uh, it was very upsetting. But the elders, the leaders of the of the community of the of the of the of the nation, um, not Eli. Eli stayed back. Eli was 98, and he was basically blind, legally blind, and I think practically blind. Um, so he wasn't really uh, uh, able to go. His sons accompanied the ark. And uh, they were around, and they together, they, after the, the loss of the first uh, battle, uh, they, dis they, re they decided to bring the, uh, the ark from the Mishkan, from Shiloh, and have the ark uh, join us in a war. Um, this ark was, uh, there are disagreement whether that was the ark that always went with us with, in the war or not. The... Uh, the understanding, uh, I think, Le'alacha, or the understanding according to the majority, is that this ark was the golden ark, the main ark, um, and the, that have the, the cherubs uh, over it. And it usually never, it never left the Holy of Holies. And it was taken, improperly taken. It's, uh, uh, they, they took it properly, in other words, they covered it as they were taking it out so nobody can see it because that is a direct, a direct uh, commandment from God when the ark is traveling, it should not be seen by the public. So they did cover it, but they shouldn't have taken it to begin with. And they took it with the tablets, with the, uh, the tablets that we received on Mount Sinai. And uh, so that's where we, uh, the, and, and they felt that by bringing that Reason. They took it for the wrong reason, and they felt that by bringing that uh, to the battle, we will win the war. So, Vayhi Kevoso, we are in uh, Shmuel Aleph, uh, chapter 4, verse 5. Vayhi Kevo Aaron, Brit Hashem El Amachane. So when the Ark was brought, the Ark of the Covenant, brought to the camp, Vayariu Kol Israel, so everybody cheered, Tru'ag Dolav Ateom Aaretz, so they cheered, in a very, very loud uh, voice, it was, oh, you know, imagine a few uh, tens, a few hundred, probably a couple hundred thousand people, um, all cheering uh, for when they see the, the ark uh, moving in. Now, this cheer, that's where we know there's, there's problems. One of the things that this ark did is the ark was typically, as we said, not going into war, not going anywhere. It was staying in the Holy of Holies. There was one time that this ark, this particular ark, accompanied us in a war. And that was in Jericho. Um, the, in Jericho, it was, it, we encircled the city seven times and, and, and blew the shofar. And at the head of the, of the encircling was, uh, of, of, of the troops was the ark, that ark. It, when we learned that uh, battle uh, in, in the book of Joshua, we see over there something very, very interesting. That Joshua told them specifically, don't say a word. Be totally silent. Because... It was common, one of the, the most common uh, tactics of war in, in those days was to do it, to, to make a lot of noise. Um, there is, even in modern times, there is a, in the war uh, of independence in 1948 in Israel, Davidka. the Davidka. They, they had, the Jews invented a, a uh, mortar uh, that didn't do much damage, but did a whole lot of noise. And... They, they created a few of them and they moved them around the city and it made so much noise um, that scared. Uh, scared scared people. So, so 
you know, the enemy ran away from, from Tzfat and in Yerushalayim. Several locations, very interesting. So sound d d did, uh, you know, play, play a role. It, it still plays a role nowadays when there are bombings. So you have the few that are being killed by the bomb, but the whole city is, is, is hearing the bomb and, and, you know, that's terrorizing them. So that sound is part of war. Joshua told the Jews, be quiet. I don't want to hear any sound. God doesn't want to hear any sound because this is not um, like a bag of tricks that you, you know, this is my best trick that I'm bringing into the, to the game and, and I don't need to do anything. It's, it, the, the, the ark should inspire something totally different. The ark should inspire people to think about what's right, what they did wrong, how they can do better. It's not, you know, hey, I got my, uh, you know, my, my seven-footer uh, center, and he's going to win the game for me. That, that's, not, uh, that's not what the ark is for. So Joshua told them specifically, don't say a word. Until everything is done, and until I tell you, until the war is won already. So the sound is for past, for winning after winning, being happy. There is nothing wrong about being happy after the win. This is a, you know, it's sign a, of, sign of it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's a thanking God and, you know, uh, thank God God helped us. So after the war is okay, but before, never. And so this... It, so it's okay to blow the chauffeur when uh, the, we re recaptured Jerusalem at the Kotel. <coughs> that was appropriate. Exactly. So the chauffeur at the Kotel in, in the Six-Day War, yeah, that's why... Appropriate because it was after the fact, you know, we, mm -hmm. but not before. Don't walk in sure of yourself as if you have nothing to, you know, not, nothing to contribute here, that you brought the big guns and that's it. And that's what they did here, and God really didn't, uh, didn't like that reaction and uh, basically turned off the magic, and the ark didn't help them. So, so they, uh, and the whole land was, uh, was um, uh, on wheels, you know. So they So the Philistines heard the sound of the, um, uh, of the shouting of the, of the, uh, um, how, how do you say trua in, in English? The what? Tua. yeah. When people are what? The, not the but. No. <laughs> it, the, that's the sound. It's not. It's it's a it's a human blast. It's not a uh, you know the, when the a roar? A, roar? a roar a roar. Thank you. Right. Like so yes, exactly. So so when the Philistine heard the roar and they said, "What is this big roar? What, what is what's going on here?" They called us. With, the, with our ancient name, Hebrews. They didn't call us Israel, Israelites, as it was common for us to call ourselves then. The word Jews came at a later date, right? They came from in, in Babel. What? No, 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 no. In Megillat Esther. The, the Yish Yehudi Ayah Shushan Abira, right? So, so the, the, the word Jew came in the, at the time in, in Babel in Babylon um, towards the end of the first exile, which was several hundred years later. Um, but now we were called Israelite. Israelite is the, uh, it's called the uh, Shema Ma'ala. It's the name that represents our, you know, uh, uh, how God is calling us. Uh, it's an upgraded name. We used to call the sons of Jacob, not we are the sons of Israel, right? Israel means Li Sar, Sar Li, that we are uh, um, ruling over um, that, that we have, that we have strength, that we have uh, the power that God uh, gave us um, to bring godliness into the world. So they didn't call us that. They call us the Hebrews. The Hebrews is basically a name that says the the, the, the ones from the other side of the river. Me'ever la'erden, me'ever me'ever la'nahar. It's the, uh, Abraham was called the he Hebrew one because he came from the other from the other side of the of the river and the Euphrates. Um, so they called us the Hebrews. But they did know 
that we do have something going on with God, that we have something special that no other nation has. And they knew intuitively that that roar means that we suddenly got support from, from higher powers. Now, that did not stop them from fighting us. It's a very convoluted attitude, very irrational attitude. They knew, they were afraid, but they didn't care anyway and they went against it. Very similar to, to uh, those who are anti-Semites nowadays, you know, they, they, they feel something, they know something, they go against it and they do, you know, they go, they do things that are not necessarily rational. Um, so they, they were basically afraid. They were afraid. And they said that God came to the camp. Now, so, so from, we mentioned last time that the ark is mentioned here in several names. Uh, when the Jews are calling him ark, it says ark of Yudke Vavke, the covenant of Yudke Vavke. Um, when the Philistines are talking about it and we're referring to it as it was, uh, like the magic was off already, uh, we call it the Ark of Judgment, Aron Elokim. And this is where after this roar, after the roar, it became from the Ark of God, from Yud Kevavke, it became Ark of Judgment. So... They, and, and that's intuitively how they call it because they don't know from the higher level of God. They just know the, the God of judgment, Elohim, which is, uh, uh, which is mentioned in plural. Um, this is how they, uh, the pagans, which they were, um, you know, you have your gods, I have my gods, I have several of them. I have a God that, you know, works with me and uh, they have, is from uh, the land of India and, and they have, they have uh, tens of thousands of gods, you know. So there are multiplicity there. So, So they said, Now we lost our advantage. Now that they have the super, you know, the, the, the big guns, the superpower, um, they, um, we, we're going to lose uh, our advantage. And... Um, they were surprised because they knew that that ark existed with us all along in Shiloh. They knew that it's there. Everybody knew that the ark is there. It was not hidden. And nonetheless, we did not fight. And we went sort of under them. We, we agreed to pay them taxes and to, uh, to be oppressed by them. And suddenly, you know, what happened? They, they felt that uh, something changed here. So then the next pasuk, uh, the rabbis are telling us that the next pasuk is, is talking about um, like a discussion between several groups in the Philistines' camp. The evil ones said, Oy God, who is going to, uh, the, 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 the pious ones, they were afraid and said, who is going to save us from this uh, great God? Um, and the evil one answered them, um, those, those gods, those are the ones that were smiting the Egyptians and, and they were smiting uh, in the desert. So they sort of ran out of tricks. Let's, we'll, we'll take this apart in a second and, and, and understand it. So first of all, just uh, as an aside, the way they referred to God was Elohim Adirim. Okay, it's a common uh, saying in Hebrew, right? God Almighty, and amazing God. Allah, you know, God, God is great, right? That's, that's where it was translated from to, to Arabic. That's, that's where it's from. God, but, gods. Gods, right. So they, plural, exactly. So they, but in Hebrew it says Elohim Adirim. When, when people are... are, are still plural. Still plural, yes. right. This is how, this is, what? Is the verb also plural? Yes. Yeah. So, 
This is the way a non-Jew calls God. When you say Elohim Adirim, this is how a Philistine is calling God. We call God Ribbono Shel Olam, you know, God Almighty. They call them amazing God. So when we refer to God, we refer to him as one, right? Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokei Hashem Echad. So we, we're saying uh, uh, throughout the, the, the davening, Hashem Hanun and Rachum, and you know, God is merciful, we, we all, and, and strong, and, and, uh, uh, and, uh, um, and, and Hanun and Rachum, and we, we're saying, compassionate. compassionate, right. So we, we're mentioning, uh, the, 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 we're talking to, about God as if he's one. But they, pagans, are used to multiple. So, you know, God is multiple. So that's how they refer to him. Now, they also compare themselves to the Egyptians. The Egyptians, the, Egyptians, uh, the, 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 the whole um, empire of Egypt and, and the war, the fact that we got out of Egypt, when did that happen? 400 years earlier. So we had several oppressors and several battles in between. We fought against the Ammonites and the Moabites and the Midianites and uh, the Yevinites. You know, where we have... We had several uh, fights throughout Sefer Shoftim, throughout the, the time of the judges, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So, but those were smaller nations, less powerful nations, nations that the Philistines did not have much regard for, and they considered themselves at the level of the Egyptians. The Egyptians was the superpower, and... God really needed to smite them uh, a whole lot in order to let us out. So they compare themselves as at that level. That's number one. Number two, they did not really mention the, um, the ten plagues that God uh, uh, what? Inflicted, inflicted on, on, the, on the Egyptians in Egypt. They're talking about the inflictions, the, 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 the plagues the Makot in the desert. Why is that? <coughs> Excuse me. When we, they wouldn't have known what happened in Egypt. Number one, they wouldn't have known. Number two, even more so, um, when we read the Agadah, if you recall, after the ten plagues, there is a section over there that's, that, that states that what happened after the ten plagues, when God split the sea, was five times more awesome. Because in Egypt, God used his finger and, and, the, uh, and to split the sea, he used his hand, which has five fingers. So, so exactly. So, so what happened in the desert, which is right where this, the, the yams of the, the Red Sea is, was much more awesome than what happened in Egypt. So that's what they're mentioning it. So... What does it say? Plagues. Plagues. In plural. Because there are ten plagues. It's plural. No, well, no, no, we're talking 50 about... 50 and 250. Yeah, they, 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 they were... I mean, it was the splitting of the sea. The splitting of the sea had... If, if you read the Agadah, you will see that it's, it's being considered either 200 or 250. Okay. It's considered a lot, more, uh, a lot more than what happened in Egypt. Egypt was like, you know, kids play compared to what they got in, in the splitting of the sea. Now, like pagans, they're thinking like pagans, that uh, their God has the same attributes as humans. And, you know, you have a certain amount of power, and when you use it, you either plug into recharge, which they didn't have at the time, you know, Tesla batteries, um, or you run out. So they felt that since for 400 years, even though there are other nations that were trying to bother the Jews, not, God did not bring in those awesome plagues from Egypt, that means it ran out. So don't worry, because we are like the Egyptians. We are stronger than those other Shmegegi nations, you know? So that's what was, uh, that was the discussion. 
And then there was the, the, one of the leaders, which was Goliath. Goliath is, is uh, showing up on the scene um, right now, not by name yet, but he's the one that's, uh, that's leading them. He's, uh, he's the tallest, the strongest, the, the, the most brazen. And it has school, he says, um, strengthen yourself and be a man, be, be, be man. You know, this is, this is where this uh, saying is coming from, be a man, you know, like, don't be, a, don't be afraid. Be a, a Philistine man. Um, because if you don't, you're going to become their slaves. Instead of they are your slave, you're going to become theirs. So they, this is where, this is how we know that they were not afraid to be killed. Because there was no, <clears throat> there was no obligation to kill them. They, and they felt like, you know, the worst that can happen to us is to be slaves. Is this the same Goliath that uh, Same one. Three years before that. Three. What? Three years. That's all? That's all. Three, four years. No, uh, no three years. No, no, three years. Three. It's less than three. It's two and a half years before David became a king. Right. We are now two and a half years before David is a king. I, I thought this is before the kingdom. Before, before Saul, Saul was a king for two and a half years. That's it. That's it. Saul was a king two and a half years. His son was a king a few months, so it's three years. So it's three years before David became a king. Um, so Goliath, you know, is, is alive and kicking, you know, and, uh, and he is leading the, uh, the Philistines. And this, is, this battle made him famous because he is the one that captured the ark, as we will see. So it has Shim. So it says, um, uh, b b before we continue, I just forgot something in the in the previous uh, verse. Um, <clears throat> there is uh, th this discussion that we mentioned uh, before last time. If we had two arcs or one arc, right? So the proof that there was one arc is lying in the in the word Elokim um, Adirim. That's God is amazing because they felt that God Himself came. And God himself is, is the one in that, in that one ark. So in the Gemara, when the, when the rabbis are discussing whether there was one or two, whether we brought in the, the less uh, important one or the more important one, um, this is what they say, you know, if you can't call it amazing to something which is uh, second class. This is, this is the best that there is. So anyway, so Goliath is, is telling them... Um, just rise up and fight. So they fought, and then Vainagef. Vainagef is, is they, they lost, they fell, uh, but it's not in plural form, it's in singular form. Because the whole Jewish nation, as one, we all faltered. As, you know, as if like, uh, you know, on, on, on cue. Um, in the first battle, if you recall last time, after the battle, we lost 4,000 men. Where did we run to? We ran to the camp where... We, no, we went, we first, before we brought the Aaron, we ran away to the camp where we settled, we, we, you know, before the battle, you... Uh, to, before the battle, you set up yourself... In a, close to the front line, where you have your supply lines and everything, and that's where your tents, you know, that's where that's where your headquarters, and from that camp you go to the battle. So when the battle was over, we came back to the camp. You know, it was not we didn't feel that the camp is going to run over by the Philistines. It was not far from the from the front line. That was after the first battle. After the second battle, we ran like mice. All over to our to our homes, to to you know everywhere. And if you look at the map that I, that I supplied, um, <clears throat> they they see you see on the on the top that there is one thick arrow coming in. That's when we came to the battle um, near the letter B, and um, 
when we ran away, we ran with those small arrows all over the place. We, um, and the point is that they were chasing us and we ran by foot. And as they were chasing us and we faltered and we fell, a lot of people died in the run, in the, uh, stampede. In the stampede, in the, in, in, it's, I, I think it was more, it's not really was a stampede because we ran, it was a very big Scattered. area and it, we scattered all over, so we didn't step on each other. They just chased us and, and killed us, uh, and, and they killed the 30,000 people. And the, the, the smite, the, the, the defeat was very, very big. And 30,000 people fell from the Jewish army. And the worst thing, of course, Ve'aron Elokim Nilkach, and the... Um, the, the ark was taken. Now, the commentaries are saying here is that as soon as they heard the roar, Goliath decided, you know what, this is our opportunity to take their magic. And he is the one that was aiming to capture that. That was his mission, to capture the, the Aaron. And the two sons of Eli died protecting that ark, and Goliath took it. Now, at this point, we have, um, we will switch from, um, from, from the book here to the Medrash. And the Medrash is telling us that after they captured the ark, Goliath took the tablets out of the ark and was standing, you know, dancing, you know, in the center with everybody with those two tablets. Now, those were very, very heavy tablets. The tablets were 40, 48, um, 48, inch, 48 centimeters, 48 centimeters, six tfachim. So 48 centimeters by 48 centimeters by by uh, by 24 centimeters, okay? So it's a, a foot, but two feet by two feet by, by, by a foot around, okay? Um, and um, stone, two of them, very heavy. Um, and, and Goliath was very strong and, and he danced with them. Now, at that point, we have another character which will come on the scene soon, showing up, and that is King Saul. Before he was a king, that was uh, that was the way his way of uh, coming on the on the scene was. Now, he was a very strong man, a very inspired um, religious man, and very inspired by um, what's going on. And he was in the battle, and then when everybody ran away, you know, when we lost. He ran as well. And he ran all the way to Shiloh, which was 60 miles, 60 kilometers, 60 kilometers away from the battle, which is around 36 miles. Uh, 36, 37 miles, right? So he ran to Shiloh, and over there he was told that the ark was captured. The people started running before the ark was captured. It's very hard to run with an ark. So when they, they were protecting the ark, and then when the ark, when they ran away, the ark was taken. So he you heard that... It wasn't on a carriage or anything? No, the, the ark is not allowed to be on a carriage. It, has, it must be carried by hand, by people. <laughs> by Levites, by, by Kohanim. What Aaron's sons were... It wasn't it on a, a cart that tilted it? No, no. Later, later, later. No, later. Aaron's sons? Later, not Aaron's sons. No, you're talking to David, David. And, uh, later, David's later, later, later on. They made a mistake and they brought it in on a, on a carriage. They brought it in on a carriage. Well, you, you'll hear it soon why. All right. So, the movie yeah, yeah, that's, uh, okay. that's a sequel. Um, <laughs> so, so, what happened is that he heard that the ark was captured, so he ran back 37 miles. It's like more than a marathon, right? To the battleground and struggled with Goliath, with Goliath. 
He struggled with him and took away the tablets in a miraculous way. And the tablets didn't make it to the Philistines' town. When they took the ark, they took just the ark. Now, the ark itself had importance to it. If you read how God is describing to build the ark, you know, he gave us in, in, in Parashat Tuma. Yeah, they had the cherubs on it. Because they opened it, they took the they took the the the, the, tablets. the the tablets from inside and they closed it back. And so the ark itself is not allowed to be seen. It doesn't say that the tablets are not allowed to be seen. The tablets are not seen anyway. When when the when the ark is traveling, the tablets are inside. So w- there is nothing to cover. But the ark itself had something special about him. The cherubs themselves had something special about him. God decided to, um, uh, to put his uh, headquarters on earth between those two cherubs. Okay, so it's not inside where the, the tablets are. The tablets are the, um, if you will, the soul of the ark, but the ark had an importance as well. And uh, the ark, later on, as it was traveling... Um, was create, create havoc but in, in, in their midst because they don't, they're not equipped and they're not allowed to take it, to look at it, to carry it, to touch it, to, you know, they, they didn't, they obviously it's not for them. Um, but the tablets were not there. So the next pasuk is describing it, Vayaretz Ish bin Yamin, and, and a, a man from the, from the tribe of Benjamin, which the rabbis are telling us was Saul, he ran from the battlefield, and he came uh, to Shiloh, and then he ran back. So he, he, was, he, he, he was in the battle, ran to Shiloh, came back to the battlefield, took the tablets, struggled with, with Goliath, took the tablets, and went back. Later on, after he was told by Shmuel that his time is up, that God is not going to give him an extension, not give him a say, you know, his, the, the royalty is going to move from him. He was afraid to fight Goliath. That's why he was asking, he was looking for, for someone else to fight Goliath, and he was recruiting David, David to do that. He was afraid because he knew that, you know, that can be his, his fall. But now it's, all be, it's before any of that, before he became a king, and that's what made him a king. The fact that he gave, you know, in, a, in an amazing... Mesirut uh, Nefesh, he gave his life to bring the tablets back, gave him the, the, uh, the authority to, and, and the, the uh, importance and the, 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 to, to, be, to lead the Jews. And uh, they say here, Umadav Kurim Vadamal Rosho, and his uniforms were torn because he made Kriya. When, because the Aaron, the Ark, was taken away, he was mourning it. So he made Kriya as if someone died, right? And he put, um, he put um, uh, dirt on his head for, uh, as a sign of, of mourning. And because of that, he merited to wear the garment of a king and to put uh, a, a, a crown on his head because he acted so uh, amazingly in, in, that, uh, in, that, uh, in that time. So he ran 45 miles with this, these, these 37, pieces. 37, 37, 180. Stone, but the last time with pieces of stone that weighed maybe a quarter of a ton. Exactly. Um, and he was, he was um, when, when he was described, when he was described, you know, his physical uh, features are described, that he was head and shoulders above everybody else. His shoulders were at the end of the head of everybody else. So if the whole Jews were standing... You know, you'll see him popping out. Uh, he was really strong and really, and obviously he had, uh, you know, uh, God's help. And uh, you mentioned uh, David last time that the Aaron, the Ark, was carrying the people who were carrying it. The, the people were not carrying it. The, he was carrying them. So those tablets had something to them, and uh, you know, he was able to accomplish that. Now, Gerard? yeah. Is Goliath mentioned in the text? I didn't see it. No, Goliath is not mentioned in the text. It's mentioned in the, in the Medrash. Oh, okay. in, and um, in Midrash Muel. Now, the, the irony, not the irony, is it's like uh, always measure for measure. Um, when, when the person who came to announce the death of Saul 
two and a half, three years, two and a half years later, when Saul died, he also was, came with torn clothes and dirt on his head. You know, as a, as a sign, as sort of, this is the, the equal... The bookends. Mida, can I get Mida? You know, he was mourning um, the, the ark. He will be mourned properly as well. Uh, so then he, he showed up in, in Shiloh. Now, the Philistines were chasing us, and the fear was that they're going to come to Shiloh and destroy the city. That's the, that's the you know, the Shiloh was the capital city. That's the, uh, the next uh, obvious step. That's what the map shows. That's what the map shows, that they arrived there, right. Um, the truth is that, um, as far as I know, the city was not destroyed at the time. They, they may, may have, at least the Mishkan was not destroyed. The tabernacle was not destroyed because it was moved later on to, to another location, to Kiryat Anavim. But the place lost, the place lost it. With that, kind, with that battle, the place lost it. So Eli um, as we know from last time, was very nervous about the ark leaving the Holy of Holies and going on a, some sort of a un, unplanned field trip. Um, so he was sitting in the gate in, the, in, a, in a vision, in a place that, uh, uh, that, that has a, 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 a higher uh, hill that has a, 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 a lookout that can see further to the, to the road that comes to Shiloh. Because he was waiting to see. Now, he was standing there, not because he was able to see, he was blind. But he, he stood over there because apparently that's where everybody was standing. Now, it's interesting, again, measure for measure, um, when, when uh, the temple, the first temple was destroyed, uh, when the first temple, when the second temple was destroyed, um, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai also was standing, Derech HaMitzvah also was standing in a, in a Luka place to see and waiting to see what happened in the battle. So the same words were used in the Gemara, in the Mishnah, to describe that. Anyway, <coughs> we have here the word Yad, but it's not written Yad, it's not written Yad, it's written Yach, with a Chaf, um, to signify the confusion that was, uh, and, and, the, and the total, uh, um, you know, Yad is showing, is, is signifying strength, and, and Eli was powerless um, and, and, and sort of deflated. Why? Because his heart was very, very scared, was very... Um, uh, what? Yach, Yach is, is also mach. Yach is mach, is also weak. Um, from, so... Um, he was very afraid on the, about the ark. And, and that man, uh, which we know was uh, Saul, came to tell this, the, the news, and every, the whole city was uh, crying out, was, was, uh, was upset. Now, Eli is blind. I'm saying it several times because he didn't see him coming. He didn't see him carrying the, the tablets. He didn't see... The, 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 the torn clothes, he didn't see the dirt, he didn't see anything. All he can do is use his hearing. So Eli heard a special cry, a special roar uh, of, of what is this roar that I'm hearing? So the, the man came and told Eli the story. Um, and the Eli ben Tishim Ushmone Shana Venav. And Eli was 98 at the time, and he was blind and couldn't see. Now, um, that man thought that he should tell him the story as it is, because everybody knew. But Eli knew nothing. He didn't have, he didn't receive the information in bits and pieces slowly. He knew at this point nothing. So this man is laying down the entire information in one shot. So the man told Eli, I came from the battle, and, and I ran from the battle. And, and I ran from the battle. Why did you run from the battle? Ask him, Eli. So he said, 
So he tells him, the messenger, he's telling him, Nas Israel, the Jews ran away, um, the, uh, uh, retreated uh, in front of the Philistines, and they, they, they suffered big losses, and your two sons died, and the, the Ark of the Covenant was taken. So, and he thought that by standing there with the tablets and telling him that story, he will know, well, at least the tablets are here, but he didn't see the tablets. So his response was, he was so upset, he fell and died, basically, which we'll read about in the next Pasuk. But I just wanted, before we read about the next Pasuk, I just wanted to, uh, um, to say something about the, the, the Mevaser. The word Mevaser uh, means uh, someone who gives you news. You know, in newsies, right? <laughs> they, they tell you what? Broadcasters. Yeah, they, they give you they give you information. Now, mevaser is used for good news, only for good news. Psorot tovot, right? Psorot tovot, right? That's, we we say the word mevaser in Oshana Rabba when we're describing when Mashiach comes. Call mevaser mevaser vayemer. The sound of the messenger who gives us the news is coming and saying Mashiach is coming. So Mevaser is good news. What good news do we have here? <laughs> I mean, the whole time we're saying that he told and he said and the messenger, and here we're saying the word Mevaser. We're saying the word Mevaser because the tablets were saved. The main thing was saved. That's the good news. And he meant to convey the good news, but before conveying the good news, he told him everything that led to the good news by the time we got to the good news, there was nobody to tell the good news to. Anyway, so um, next week, I, uh, next week I'm not going to be in town. So uh, my daughter is getting married and uh, we're going to be in Texas. So um, I'll have to skip it and we'll see you all in two weeks. So after, we not after Pesach, before Pesach. We can have a L'chaim tonight, right? <laughs>